Do 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 do. Guys, welcome back to another awesome, unique episode. This one we're doing, guys, uh, is the Cinema Scale. There are ten things that makes a movie great. Just got back from the theaters and got the opportunity to sit down and watch Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, directed by none other than James Gunn. There are 10 things that makes a movie phenomenal. Uh, we're going to go through them briefly, and I'm just going to give you guys the cold hard facts so you can be able to make that decision. Um, it was a phenomenal movie. I would say that Marvel made a huge comeback. They really brought things to the table that we as fans deserve to see. It was it was such a breath of fresh air being able to watch a movie like this. You know that the cinema scale is is focused on ten components that make a movie phenomenal and extraordinary. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it is definitely one that you're gonna want to see uh, with your people. Uh, I caught it on the matinee, so thirty percent off. Boom. But let's just start with the beginning. Let's just start at the top of the scale and then work our way down, down, down. So one, the plot. The movie follows a comprehensive story arc and is plausible. It was consistent there was so much at stake in this movie um that quill had to deal with and uh, we find him now coping with gamora uh being deceased from his timeline and then trying to uh, reattach himself to the one of uh, the present uh, as it were or the past uh, as it were and i just loved the way the story uh, cultivated itself there were stakes there were high risk um, we were introduced to Adam Warlock. He was very good. I really enjoyed uh, being able to see Adam Warlock on screen and how he was portrayed. Um, just a phenomenal, phenomenal plot consistency. And that's something that you would expect. They interwove all of the, the past movies. We got a nice shout out about Yondu. We, we know we lost him in the second movie. Uh, they even interwove uh, Pete's family and his dealings with them. And it was a really strong plot. The It, it was just a strong plot. And um, I just really loved how they cultivated it. Number two, the attraction. The movie has an interesting premise and has entertainment value. Comedy, phenomenal. Action, phenomenal. Um, it, it was just everything that you could expect. There are just moments in which you just don't know in which way the movie's going to go, but that's in a good way. When you come to the theater, you're not looking to see as to where the movie's going to go. You're looking to be able to see... If this movie is going to motivate you, I, I looked around the theater. There were some people who were moved to tears. It was it was nice. The entertainment value was high. Never get tired of, of seeing uh, Bradley Cooper uh, in, 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 interact uh, with Drax. Uh, and uh, they, it's just it, it was very nice. They kept that comedic chemistry alive, but they also were able to, to raise those stakes, which is something that I really, really enjoy when, when going to be able to see these films. And that definitely checks off number two. The theme, number three, the themes are identifiable and deeply connect. I, I would say in this film, I connected definitely with Peter uh, Quill and, and definitely connecting with Rocket. Um, I could really see myself in their shoes. I could really visualize the circumstances from where they came from, from the first movie in 2014 until where they are now. It was it was beautiful, and a lot of people definitely can connect uh, with with these characters because it, it's a, it's a true underdog story. Um, sometimes, sometimes you're going to find yourself in life coping with things that you're not you're not always going to be able to win. But when you watch stories like this, it definitely inspires you to move on and motivates you, and it just keeps you strengthened. Um, there was just nice depth to the film. We got a nice backstory on Rocket and just where he came from, where he's trying to go in life, and it all makes sense. It connects with all of the, the other uh, past movies before it, and it's really something that you'll find that is realistic. You know, The problem that they found themselves in was not something that was just unrealistic in their personal lives it's definitely something that we all could go through number four the acting the characters are multi-dimensional and the actor's performance is convincing i really we so usually when we think about guardians of the galaxy there's comedy and there was a nice balance of comedy and drama uh, in this film i think that they did a, a phenomenal job um as far as the acting, they definitely bumped it up a notch uh, in connection with the, the first couple of movies. It was it was really good. Like it really they really did a good job. They really prepared 
Um, I walked into the movie with with no um, thoughts in my mind. I wasn't trying to guess as to what was going to happen. But now as a movie reviewer coming to you guys, you know, from R.E.D. Podcasting Studios as the cinema scale, I'm going into this movie unbiased and blank. And that's the most important thing with these reviews. You, you have to be unbiased and blank and you have to call it a spade, a spade. You have to really shout out what it is, you know, um, studying theater and being involved in that, that environment. I'm very strict on movies. So I don't just throw out 10 out of 10 left and right, but I'm just making sure that you're not going to waste your money. When you watch a film, you should be checking off these boxes to be able to see as to how the performance captivates you. And they did a great job. All of the actors were phenomenal. And just seeing Gamora, uh, Zoe Zaldana, in this different light under this new development, because she's not the same Gamora that we know from the, the past couple of movies. She's a changed woman. And that really that really is reflected. Very, very nice. Number five, the dialogue. The dialogue kept the consistency. Uh, it helps tell the story in a believable context. And we know the Guardians and how they communicate. They still kept that style of communication strong. And I love that. It, it's just they have their own language, even though they're speaking English, of course, and some mixed in alien dialect. But they still have this way of dealing with each other that if you listen to it on the audio, you're like, wow, this is definitely a Guardians of the Galaxy film. They kept that momentum even during difficult times. It was very nice. You had a nice, nice, healthy, verbal expression from each character, their feelings, their intentions. And the storytelling of it was strong through the characters. You can definitely follow and keep up with, with the dialogue, the dialogue. So it was really nice. Oh, my goodness. Number six, guys, the cinematography was so there is a consistency. Uh, it's a visual language that is enhanced by creative use of lighting, setting and wardrobe. Yes, cinematography does involve your setting and your wardrobe. It was nice. It was very nice. It was colorful. It was vibrant. There were scenes in which they are in uh, th this spaceship, as it were. And just nice, healthy lighting. Uh, there, There's many scenes in which they do slow-mo action sequences, and you're going to love that so you can just be able to enjoy all of what they're bringing to the screen. It, it was just nice. The continuity was strong. It, it was very, very good. They, they, always, they always play a homage to the Guardians of the Galaxy by just those moments. Those moments when they're just in those sequences of action, and you just, they just slow it down just a little bit for you to be able to understand understand N number seven the editing the pace fits the film's tone and the effects are seamlessly integrated it was a nice healthy pace uh, the main objective of good editing is to convey the movie's tone and it did just that um you, you know you got to realize that the tone is heavily shaped by the pace and the choice of the edits and they did a great job it was it was very smooth um it, it didn't look uh, artificial it wasn't cheesy um it, it didn't look like uh, you know just something that you would see from uh, you know 10 15 20 year, years ago but it was it was nicely edited it was seamless it, it was really really uh nice to the point where you wouldn't be distracted by it so the editing was nice and really good and you find that with certain space movies they kind of just shift off the editing they kind of just oh it's a space movie we don't have to go as strong but they really really brought it and that was nice number eight the soundtrack the the oh my goodness it's an authentic sound design and the film score it, you're making sure that the film score is in harmony with the story guys oh my goodness the soundtrack was phenomenal again i saw people crying in the theater bro like for example uh in the meantime space hog um just phenomenal song if you are someone who loves music you are going to enjoy this film they have great a great selection at the right time for example they have reasons earth wind and fire that was just a nice way to introduce that specific scene and then when you and i'm not going to spoil where this song comes in at but the dog days are over florence and the machine oh my goodness it was it was everything that you needed in that exact moment and it did motivate and it just moved you to believe that everything's going to be all right um everything is going to be all right i really love the soundtrack i really love the music I, I, if you love music again, you're going to want to download the soundtrack even before watching the film because it, it's that integrated in, into, into the film. Number nine, directing. 
the director, this is what we keep in mind. When directing, he has a uniform vision and executed the vision to its fullest potential. It was done. There were so many moments in which you had to feel emotion in these scenes, and it was to its full potential. I feel like the director, it was like he got a rag, as it were, and he just wrung out all of that water. And emotionally, I mean, they it was it was so good, man. Like, I'm not even giving you guys the runaround. He did a phenomenal job. I loved that it was executed to its full potential. There was nothing missing. There was nothing lacking, even from how the first scene of the film is executed. It, it's not it, it's a guardian story. So you're not going to find, you know, that same hunky doryness. But it was it was done in a way. That we know the director got exactly what he wanted. You're going to get what you want sitting in that seat. And it was definitely directed with the fans in mind. You got to keep that in mind. Got to keep that in mind. Let's go to the it factor. That's our final point on the cinema scale. The it factor. The movie is unique and transcendent. It is unique because recently Marvel has been throwing out a lot of trash, guys. I'm not even going to lie to you. A lot of it's been trash. And I want to tell you guys, as someone that is an actual Marvel's fan who, who's been with them from from the, the, let's just say, The Incredible Hulk, you know, and we're not going to go into the backstory for that film, but let's just say it's in the, you know, the archives, as it were, leading us off into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You're a fan, right? You think of the word fan. A fan can change quickly, right? So, I hate that word, but when you think about a family member, right? Oh, you know, I love my mother, my brother, my cousin. This is my family. This is the circumstances. This is what it's going to be. But when you think of a fan, oh, it's like I can just pick and choose what I do. If you are a true Marvel fan, you're going to just get over the Wompers that they've, they've thrown out recently. Like, they've had movies that have just stunk completely, and it's really made me mad. Like, it's really made me mad to the point where I'm like, I'm done with Marvel. I'm like, I'm done. But at the same time... You have to find reasonableness when when going to watch these films. Me personally, I was apprehensive, but you know, as a movie critic, I have to like, you know what? I'm just gonna push my emotions to the side and see what I can do, you know, for that next person. And I'm glad that I went. I really enjoyed it because Marvel brought it again, and it's just a little sprinkle of hope uh, in connection with this film. That just it was like all of their story was summed up. There was nice closure, and, and the it factor for me was. It was true homage to where Guardians of the Galaxy started. I think that is the uniqueness and what makes it trend, uh, transcendent. Um, don't give up on the film. If you are a true Marvels fan, don't give up. Don't assume it's going to be bad. Watch the film. Think about where you've been with Marvel, where you're trying to go, and then where they're taking you. Um, a true family. You know, you can't replace them. They have their quirks, their imperfections, and, and their negative th traits and stuff. Work with them. Work with them. Keep working with the Marvel family, and little by little, we don't know. Uh, we may have a, another incline of phenomenal movies. Well, guys, that's it for me on the Cinema Scale. We love you guys, and uh, as always, it's been a pleasure to kick it with you guys in this fashion. Um, if you're going to want to see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, I recommend catching the matinee. Not because the movie's bad, but because you could just save some dollars. It was an emotional pull. I think you're going to love the emotional aspect of it. Guys, don't forget to hit that, uh, you know, that like button, that love button, because this video continues to circulate. You guys are phenomenal. Thanks again for letting us weigh you on the cinema scale. Peace out.